Hello to you all CFT learners, in this course we'll go through the VUF multiphase flow model. We will investigate the underlying physics, its applications, and how to employ the existing submodels of the VUF. In the next sessions, we will give you a tutorial on how to use the explained options in this session to simulate different VUF related examples and problems. The specific topics that we will cover here include VOF applicability, VOF general settings, implicit versus explicit formulations, available discretization methods, body force formulation, open channel boundary condition, interface modeling, level set method, and surface tension modeling along with mass transfer mechanisms. The first model that we will discuss here is the VOF multiphase module. The view of model is a surface tracking technique applied to a fixed Eulerian mesh and it is designed for two or more immiscible fluids where the position of the interface between those fluids is of interest. Uh, furthermore, in the VOF model, a single set of momentum equations is shared by the fluids and uh, the volume fraction of each of the fluids in each computational cell is tracked throughout the domain. So basically, the size of the mesh cells in the hypothetical domain plays a prominent role on how the interface between the phases are captured. The VOF model is used in many industrial applications. It is an extremely powerful model to track the interface between different phases and can be implemented to predict fluid motion under various conditions. Some of the more famous applications include uh, tracking the interface of water in free surface flows such as in canals, sloshing phenomenon, prediction of water behavior in case of dam breakage, motion of bubbles in liquid due to phenomena such as boiling, evaporation or condensation, and many more. As mentioned in the introduction section, the VOF model is an interface tracking method which calculates the volume fraction of each phase in a computational cell and visualizes the interface between phases. The phases should not be able to mix together because then the VOF model is unable to define the interface between them. Some of the typical problems which can be modeled using VOF are listed here such as jet breakup, motion of large bubbles in a liquid, motion of liquid after a dam break, and steady or transient tracking of uh, any liquid gas interface. Another important point regarding employing the VOF model is to know that if the size of computational cells uh, is larger than the interface length, then the interface can be visualized. For example, as you can see in the last image, uh, due to the fact that the size of the mesh cells are larger than the interface length scale, which is the bubble's diameter, then the VOF model uh, isn't able to capture the correct interface. So that's something that you should pay attention to. Now, when you decide to use the VOF model, you should bear some basic information in your mind. For instance, only pressure-based solver can be used, meaning that the VOF model is not applicable when using density-based solver uh, for simulating compressible flows. Another equally important point is the fact that the gravity is a mandatory option for most problems in which the VOF model is used. And finally, the VOF model can be used for both cases of steady and transient solvers. In this and future slides, we'll talk about the VOF specific settings and options. The first option that we will investigate here is the difference between volume fraction explicit or implicit formulation. The main difference between these two options uh, is, is in fact in the way the volume fraction equation is discretized and solved. If the volume fraction's value from the previous iteration is used in the equation for calculating the volume fraction in the current iteration, then the implicit method is used, while if the values from previous iterations are not used, then the explicit method is employed. Each of these methods have their own merits. For example, by using explicit method, the computational cost in each iteration is reduced. However, the time step size must be decreased. The opposite can be said about implicit method. Alright, as explained in the previous slide, when using the explicit method, the physical time step defined by the user will be subdivided into multiple time steps to solve the volume fraction equation accurately. Now, each of these sub-time steps must satisfy the current number-based time step size criterion to be deemed acceptable. By setting the current number to less than unity, it is ensured that the interface will not cross more than one cell in each time step, and therefore you may be certain regarding the accuracy of your results. Moreover, if you are wondering how the sub-time step sizes are calculated, you can take a look at the presented formula. You may also obtain more information by viewing the ANSYS Fluent 
online help webpage. And finally, regarding the implicit formulation, this method solves phase continuity equation iteratively together with momentum and pressure, in contrast to explicit formulation which was only available when the transient solver was enabled, the implicit method can be used for both transient and steady solvers. One of the most important points when using the VOF model is to employ appropriate discretization method. Based on the kind of solver and the implicit or explicit methods selected, different types of discretization methods become available. The main points to consider for each discretization method are the provided accuracy of each method along with the computational cost they demand. Currently, you can see the available methods for transient solver and for both implicit and explicit methods. In this slide, you can clearly see and understand the differences between each of the available methods. As shown, geo-reconstruct and compressive methods provide great accuracy when explicit format is used, and compressive for the implicit method. However, their computational cost is greater compared with other methods. Now, when the steady solver is used, the explicit method is unavailable. However, Fluent offers another accurate volume fraction discretization method for a steady implicit solver, which is the BGM. The BGM scheme is introduced to obtain sharp interfaces with the VOF model, comparable to that obtained by geometric reconstruction scheme. Also, a table is provided in which these three methods are compared comprehensively. And of course, finally, as you can see here, a table including all of the available volume fraction discretization methods is shown here. You can compare the available methods and see which is when available and which is better for your simulation and problem. Now in this and in the future slides, we will try to cover different options and submodels to the VOF multiphase flow model. The first option is the body force formulation. This option is mainly used for flows with large body forces such as gravity, centrifugal, and surface tension forces. As I mentioned earlier, for most cases and problems uh, in which the VOF multiphase flow model is used, it's a good option and idea to actually enable this option. The next option that we'll discuss here is the VOF model's ability to model free surface flows such as flow in canals, oceans, or inside any container where there are only liquid and gas flowing in a way that they have one distinct interface. Another interesting option that is available here is the fluent's ability to model different types of wave boundary conditions such as shallow, intermediate, and deep liquids based on wave theories. Now, when you decide to use the open channel wave boundary conditions option, you should first obtain some information regarding the theory behind wave modeling. The most important parameters that should be considered when modeling different types of waves are wave height, liquid depth, and wave length. Based on the values defined for these parameters and their ratio, three different regimes can be defined, shallow, intermediate, and deep. Also, if you pay attention to the graph presented in this slide, you can gain info regarding the range of the mentioned parameters and their respective regimes. You may obtain more information regarding the wave theory using Fluent Online Help. The last option shown in the VOF window is the interface modeling option. There are three options available here, which are sharp, dispersed, and sharp or dispersed. Now, when using the sharp option, you need to make sure that a distinct interface is present between the phases. Or for example, in the cases where you want to use the dispersed option, uh, you need to make sure that the phases are interpenetrating. And of course, regarding the sharp or dispersed option, it is a hybrid approach for flows consisting of both sharp and dispersed interfaces. This option can be also used to capture mildly sharp interface. Mildly sharp interfaces are those that are neither as sharp as would be captured by the schemes available with the sharp option, nor as diffused as would be captured by the schemes available with the dispersed option. Another option that is available here is the interfacial anti-diffusion. This treatment is applied only in interfacial cells and it actually attempts to suppress the numerical diffusion. It should be mentioned that this option is only available uh, when the sharp uh, interface modeling option is selected. Now, if you select the sharp or dispersed option, some additional discretization options become available. 
The zonal discretization option is appropriate for applications that require either sharp or dispersed interface modeling depending on the cell zone. After enabling this option, uh, you will need to specify the slope limiter value on the multiphase tab of the fluid dialog box for each cell zone. The next option is the phase localized discretization and it is suitable for applications that require either sharp or dispersed interface modeling. After enabling the phase localized discretization option, you will need to specify the slope limiter values for each phase pair in the phase interaction tab. So as mentioned in the previous slide, after enabling this option, you need to head for the cells and conditions and search for the multiphase tab. Next, in front of the compressive scheme slope limiter, you need to enter a value between 0 and 2. This option enables the user to switch between different volume fraction discretization methods in different zones in the domain. For instance, you can see that when setting the value of the slope limiter to 0 for a zone, the first order upwind method will be used to discretize the v volume fraction equation. You can view the table presented in this slide to obtain more info about the value of the slope limiter and the respective discretization methods that are used. Now, regarding the phase localized discretization method, it is mainly useful when you have more than two phases in the domain, and it is highly important to capture the interface between only two specific phases, while the third phase is not that important. So in order to reduce the computational cost, the user may enable this option and specify the slope limiter value based on the table provided here in order to manipulate with the discretization methods of each phase pair. Alright, uh, it also should be mentioned that uh, when you are using the explicit formulation, uh, there are several additional options that you can access by clicking on the expert options button. The first option, as you can see here, uh, shown in the window after clicking on the expert options, is the stop time step calculation method. This uh, settings control how the time scale is computed when determining the time step used for volume fraction. So, uh, for most cases, the hybrid option is used, and it's a good uh, it's a good idea to keep the default option selected. The second option that you can see here inside this window is the solve VLF every iteration. This settings control whether to solve the volume fraction equations once per iteration or only once per time step. Another modification to the VOF model is the level set method. This method uses a level set function defined as distance from the interface. This function varies smoothly compared to conventional volume fraction fields providing better resolution. This modification is mostly used when modeling curved interfaces in surface tension dominated flows. Other advantages are uh, the fact that this model and modification works better for the surface tension dominated flows which was mentioned earlier and also the fact that it does not require uh, the view of a smoothing procedure. While there are some disadvantages such as uh, this model recommend is, is recommended only for geo reconstruct scheme and it also requires finer meshes compared uh, to just VOF uh, model. Alright, now that we are talking about surface tension, it's time to delve deeper into this context. First, to find the related option, you need to head for the phase interaction tab and then select the forces sub tab. Under the global options, you will need to enable the surface tension force modeling. Here you will face with two options of Continuum Surface Force Model or CSF and Continuum Surface Stress Model or CSS. When enabling the CSF model, the surface force is converted to volumetric force and curvature and other forces on the interface will be calculated explicitly. However, when employing the CSS model, the surface force will be presented in the form of a stress tensor in the momentum equation. This model is not appropriate for curvature calculations and is recommended for sharp corners. Also, the explicit method is not used in this option. The other two options available next to CSS and CSF are wall adhesion and jump adhesion options. Wall adhesion option is used to define the shape of curved interfaces and vetability. For example, when modeling a droplet or bubble over a solid surface, a contact angle must be defined to account for the shape and vetability effect of solid surface on the bubble or droplet. 
The other option is jump attention. Jump attention is a type of boundary condition in the Fluent software that allows for the modeling of thin film of fluid on a solid surface. It is different from wall adhesion in that it accounts for the presence of thin layer of fluid between the solid surface and the bulk fluid. Wall adhesion assumes that the fluid is in direct contact with the solid surface. Jump adhesion is useful in situations where the thickness of the fluid layer is comparable to the characteristic length scales of the problem, such as in microfluidics or nanoscale flows. Another option that should be filled when setting the view of multiphase model is the materials related to each phase. First, you need to add the related materials. Second, you need to define the primary phase and secondary phases. Third, you need to select pertinent material to each phase under the phase material section. And last, you need to click on add phase to add a new phase if needed. Finally, in case you had mass transfer in your model, you can hit for the phase interaction tab and heat mass reaction sub tab and enable any type of mass transfer between the pertinent phases. There are different options available here, but the built-in mechanisms are cavitation and evaporation condensation models, which we will talk about more in future sessions. Alright, in this session we explained the underlying physics of the VOF model and its real-life applications. In the following sessions, we will provide some examples and tutorials on how to use the VOF model by simulating some common problems. To benefit from Mr. CFD services, including simulation, consultation, and training, contact our experts via info at mrcfd.com or visit our website, www.mrcfd.com.